Welcome to Lemons.com. In this video, we will be configuring device profile and compute firewall for a Cisco VSG. Device profile and device policies contain device global configurations, and these are things like time zone, NTP, SNMP, and syslog. Compute profile, on the other hand, acts as the policy container that doesn't really do anything until you assign a VSG resource to it. If you're familiar with the Cisco UCS, this is very similar in concept of service profile. So the way this is going to work is we'll create a device profile and related policies first and assign it to a compute firewall at the app one level. Since we ever created this organization structure back in the VNMC installation video with the root tenant one, DC one, and app one, then we will create a VSG resource pool called tenant one VSG pool that will have the VSG that we install in the previous video and assign that to the compute firewall. VSG by itself doesn't really have any config, so technically it does not really matter which VSG in the pool that gets assigned to the compute firewall. Only after it's been assigned, it will receive all the policies defined under the compute firewall and start having personality, if you will. We also have a Windows 2008 machine at the 172.16.32.40 that we will use as a SNMP and syslog server. At this point, you should have the VSG install and register to VNMC. Now let's log into our VNMC web interface. And just to make sure that we do have VSG registered, so you can go to uh, resource management and resources under firewall. Right here with under our VSG, we have a VSG, the IP115.16, which is the primary and it's up and running and being seen by the VNMC. Now the first thing we're gonna do is to configure device policy and if you go to policy management and device configuration, and just like I mentioned in the introduction to VSG and VNMC video, you can pretty much configure the policies at any level of the organizations. So here we have tenant one, DC one, and app one. For this lab, let's go ahead and configure at data center level, DZ one. If you expand right here with policies, you can see if you refer back to this diagram, the device policy is part of device profile, so we first need to start with the device policy. And now we have on this list different policies that we can, can configure. Although we're not going to configure them all, I just want to show you. With the AAA policies, you've got authentication authorization policies and as well as the remote or radius or tactic servers. But these are strictly for the ASA 1000V, so it does is not really relevant at least for the current version of code that we're running of the VSG. So we can go ahead and skip that. Now core file, this is where you will specify the location of your core dumped if you need to, which is not going to configure. You can see you can do ports. This is pretty much using the TFTP protocol. We would not configure that. If you move down to one more fault, fault policy, this is how you would deal with when there's a fault occurs on the VNMC and just to see what you can configure as far as flapping interval, retention action, and retention interval, and how you maintain those fault, basically. Again, we're not gonna configure that. Log file, and this is to deal with the local log file, as far as, as, far as the locking level, the file size, and the file counts. And again, we're gonna skip that. What we are going to configure is SNMP. So here we'll go and add SNMP policy, We'll give it a name, it's called LM SNMP default. Okay, it's state is enabled by default, location, let's just come up with something and say data center. Contact, let's give uh, lab minutes. For community, you can add community, by default is public, but let's change that to Cisco. And for traps, now you have to define the destination or trap server. For us is the Windows 2008 machine right here at the IP of 32.40. So 172.16.32.40. And we'll keep the same community of Cisco. Click OK. OK. And that's it for the SNMP. The next thing we, we are going to configure is the syslog. Let's make sure it's still there. Get syslog. We'll add a syslog policy. For the name, we'll call it LM syslog default. For server, let's add a syslog server. You can see you have options to configure three different syslog servers. 
since we have only one, and that's going to be our primary at the IP of 32.40, we want to make sure you understand our debugging. Just for our lab purposes here, the admin state is enable port and protocol will leave it at default. For server interface, this is only when you deal with the ASA 1000 VSSA right here, not supported all versions of VSG. So we'll leave that blank. Okay, for as far as other locking related configuration for app for console, let's enable that and let's change that to critical level. For the monitor, let's enable that as well and lower it down to debugging. For file, let's keep it disabled since we're not really going to look into that. For buffer, let's enable that. Again, change to debugging and let's maybe change the buffer size to say 8192. Okay. Now that we have pretty much gone through all the device policies, we can now create a device profile. Okay, so let's add the device profile and let's name it LM device default time zone since you're Pacific Standard Time. Let's see if we can find here Los Angeles. And if you click on the policy tab, this is where all the configuration kind of comes together. First, there's additional config that you can configure. That wasn't really part of the device policies. Here we have the DNS server. So we'll just point it to the same 2008 machine. Again, the interface is only for the ASA 1000B. NTP, we're going to point that to the switch loopback of the upstream switch 16.0.1. We're not doing any authentication. We'll skip the interface for the domain. Name will say it's lab minutes and that is labminutes.com. See okay, and this is where you pick the policies that you that we just uh, created previously for SNMP. Drop down, select our LM SNMP default, same as syslog, syslog, uh, LM syslog default for the fault policy. Let's pick the default. Core file, that isn't really a default config, so let's leave that blank. Policy agent log file, let's choose the default. And auth policy is really irrelevant to the VSG, which is what we are dealing with here. Okay, click OK. All right, so now that we have both device policies and device profile created, we can go ahead and create a compute firewall at the app one level. So if you go to resource management and manage resources, just keep expanding or going down the hierarchy to the app one. Yeah, we have compute firewall and here this is where you can create your compute firewall. For the name, let's make it intuitive. So we're just gonna follow the path, tenant one, PC one, app one, and VSG one. With the device profile that we created, this is where you would select it. And here we have LM device default. Okay. For the host name, I'm not sure if you remember when you install or when we first installed VSG, we just leave it a default name VSG. So this is where we can overwrite that or change it. Let's keep it the same kind of name, which is tenant one, DC one, app one vsg1 okay for the data ip back on the installation video we said we're going to use the vlan 114 so the ip will be 172.16.114.16 we'll click ok All right now that we have our container compute firewall can, uh, created you can see the config state is not apply the next thing we're going to do is to create our VSG pool and then we will assign the VSG that we have to it. And let's create the pool at the tenant level. Just assume the tenant might have multiple VSG in their disposal. So go back to the tenant level and click on the pools. You can click add pool. And let's call this one tenant one VSG pool. And to assign, you can see right now, we all, since we only have a, a pair of VSG, only one show up. So we'll assign the firewall and click OK. Click OK. Now that we have a pool, we can go back to the compute firewall that we created and assign 
a VSD from the pool to it. So you can see that's the two option. You can assign specifically with which VSG you want to use. So if you click on that, you can see you can pick and choose the specific VSG that you want to use, or if it doesn't really matter which VSG you use, so you can just let the system kind of pick one from the pool for you. So here we choose the pool that we created. We'll click OK. You can see now it said applying. Just want to show what's going on right here as well. So let me bring up the console. Give it a few seconds. You can see all of a sudden the name changed to the one that we gave to the compute firewall. And that tells me the configuration has been pushed down from the VNMC to this particular VSG. Okay, we'll come back to the command line and look at it in a second here. But on the GUI, on the VNMC, the config state has changed to apply. And source interest state is set associated. On the right hand side, we have VSG detail. So this is the VSG that the system chose from the pool that has the measurement IPF 115.16. And it's the primary and the association state is associated. It's also currently reachable. Same thing if you go under resources and look at this VSG right here, the name has changed. And you can say it's right here has been associated to compute firewall at this particular level, app one, with the compute firewall with that has the name of that. And we know that the VSG has now been configured. Okay, so going back to the VSG command line, we can do show run and see what kind of config it has received. So you can spot a couple of them that we just configure on the GUI. Right there, SNMP related config. So you got contact, you got location as well as the traps and community, trap server. Keep going down right there is the data IP or for the data zero interface with the 114.16 that we assigned to that compute firewall that we create. Some of the basic policy that was already there by default, and it looks like it was at the root level. That's why this VSG received it because it got inherited from the policy that was created in the higher in the hierarchy. And one more thing to know is the locking server config is there as well. Okay, so let's do a quick test. Let me close down GUI. We have a syslock server running on the TFTP D64 here. Okay, so if you just basically do config T and exit, you can see that generated some lock messages that's been received by our syslock server. Okay, so we know syslocking is working. Now let me bring up the SNMPB program so we can do some uh, SNMP polling. Okay, here we have a device created for tenant one VSG. That's what we call it. And this is the IP of the management interface and read community is Cisco, which should match what we have configured. So let's go through this tree management MIP2, and let's walk through the system. You can see we're getting some information back, and we know this is our VSG. Not only that, say so right here, VSG 4.1, where you can see some of the parameters that we configure. So it's contact, the system name, and the location, which we've given it as the data center. Okay, so our VSG has been configured with some device global settings, but so far we haven't really configured anything for these security policies. And that's what we're gonna be looking at in the next video. So that wraps up our video on VSG device profile and compute firewall. You can sign up on our websites to receive updates or on the latest lab videos and get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.